LEGO has sadly never given us a Greek or Roman theme, but thankfully through the LEGO collectible minifigure line, we have gotten figures from both of these civilizations. So if you want to build out your own Roman or Greek theme, here are figures you can use including Warring Nations. This list will also be perfect for collectors and those who want to build custom Percy Jackson figures. Also for the record, before I get all the comments pointing this out, I know there are words I'm going to mispronounce in this. Latin is not exactly my strong suit and neither is pronouncing words. To start off this list, both Greek and Roman history is filled with many myths and legends. Now, Roman mythology draws a lot from Greek mythology, but changed the names of many characters. In the LEGO CMF line, there are many figures that represent mythical creatures and characters from this mythology. Series 6 gave us the Minotaur. A Minotaur in Greek mythology is a mythical creature with the body of a human and the head of a bull. It is often associated with the labyrinth on the island of Crete. The figure has a molded head that horns can be attached to, and wields an axe. Series 15 gave us the Faun, who has a brown flute. A Faun in Greek mythology is a mythical creature with the upper body of a human and the lower body of a goat, often associated with nature and music. This is definitely a figure you're going to want to pick up for a custom Grover. Now, I wouldn't recommend looking at our next figure because it might turn you to stone. Medusa came in series 10 and has a snake tail first seen in Ninjago and hair that is made out of snakes. Medusa is a prominent figure in Greek slash Roman mythology known as one of the three Gorgon sisters, with snakes for hair and a gaze that could turn people into stone. In series 25, we got the Harpy, which in Roman and Greek mythology was described as a greedy monster who has a woman's head and body and a bird's wings and claws. She has purple hair and wings with gold claws. In Greek mythology, the Cyclops were gigantic, one-eyed beings known for their immense strength and craftsmanship. LEGO actually gave us two Cyclops over the many waves of LEGO CMFs. The first is the Cyclops that came in Series 9. He has olive green skin and wields a club. Series 13 gave us the Lady Cyclops, who has sand blue skin and also wields a club. The color of her clothes and skin are actually swapped from Series 9 Cyclops. The Centaur Warrior came in Series 21. She wields a bow and quiver and an apple. A centaur is a mythical creature with the upper body of a human and the lower body of a horse. Her horse legs are actually a different mold than those that came in Harry Potter. In Greek mythology, mermaids were often depicted as enchanting sea nymphs, with the upper body of a woman and a lower body of a fish. Series 9 Mermaid has a blue fish tail, and Marsha, Queen of the Mermaids from the first LEGO Movie CMF Wave, has a purple fish tail. Both these figures will help you fill out this myth. Another half fish is the Ocean King, who's more like Poseidon, the Greek god of the ocean, or Neptune, the Roman god of the ocean. He comes with a sand green tail, golden trident, and dons a gold sea crown. Battle Goddess came in Series 12. She wields a spear and shield with Greek geometric pattern around a pegasus. Her helmet is gold with blonde hair attached to it. She does sort of look like Athena slash Minerva from Greek slash Roman mythology, but is a bit different. This figure is great for other custom Greek figures though. A figure connected to the battle goddess is Flying Warrior. According to his bio, when the battle goddess decided that her mission of justice could use a helping hand, she selected a warrior of the ancient world who had proven both his valor in combat and his great love of peace. Granting him with the gift of immortality, she gave him golden winged armor and armed him with a mighty spear of thunder. Not only did the flying warrior come in series 15, but he also appeared on the back of the box in Shang-Chi Escape from the Ten Rings Lego set. There are two honorable mentions to this list. Both of them are from Disney Series 2 CMF line. The first one is Hades, who is supposed to represent the god of the underworld. The second is the man himself, Hercules. Hercules does have a lot of great printed parts that are perfect for custom figures. They both would fit in great with any ancient mythology world you are trying to build. Even with all the mythical creatures, there's still a lot of real historical minifigures you can use for both Greek and Roman culture. For the Greeks, the Spartan warrior came in Series 2. In LEGO Universe, he's called Achilles Plutarch. The Spartan is based on historical Spartan warriors from Sparta, which is a prominent city-state in Laconia in ancient Greece. Most people know them, though, from the 300 movie. There are actually a few ranks of Romans you can get. The first is the Roman soldier from Series 6. He represents the basic level of soldier in the Roman army called legionaries. The Roman soldier has printing based off real Roman legionaries. He even has an imperial Gallic helmet in metallic silver, spear, and scutum style shield. You can even almost do a tortoise formation with them. You can also get a Roman officer. The Roman commander came in series 10 and mentions the Roman soldier in his bio. With his large red plume that is on a flat silver imperial Gallic helmet, he represents a centurion rank or above. He has a dark red cape and carries a gladius sword. If you had a bunch of Roman soldiers, he would look perfect for leading them into battle. The Roman emperor came in CMF series 4. He is perfect as a leader for your Roman army, leading the senate, or making your gladiators fight to the death. You know, I do wonder how he gets the thumbs up or thumbs down to say whether or not a gladiator lives or dies. 
Like, it must get really confusing. He also resembles the famous Roman leader, Julius Caesar, who is known for his salad and pizza. I'm kidding, of course. He was known for being stabbed to death 40 times. On a printed tile he holds is the phrase, well, personally, I can't pronounce that, but it translates to, I came, I saw, I conquered. The next two figures are based off of one of Rome's more gruesome traditions. The Roman Colosseum housed entertainment for the people in the Roman Empire. One of the forms of entertainment was gladiators fighting to the death, or fighting wild animals. Usually gladiators were prisoners of war who were forced to fight as seen on the movie Gladiator. You know, if you think about it, these figures are based off of a really gruesome form of entertainment. We're just gonna skip over that because they're so cool and I just really want to talk about these figures. The trident-wielding Roman gladiator came in series 17. In his bio it says, He has been rewarded with the nickname The Lion due to his unconquerable strength and courage. His nickname is why he has a lion printed on his arm. The Roman gladiator has a very similar look to the Richarius gladiator, which usually fought with a three-pointed trident and a weighted net, and was lightly armored. To go up against him is the gladiator, which came in series 5, who is very similar to the Marmillo gladiators, and wore a Casas Christa helmet. He also wields a pearl dark gray sword and shield. In his bio, it also mentions he is getting sick of being poked by the end of a trident, which could be a possible reference to the Roman gladiator. Now a couple of quick side notes. One, yes, you could get the Lego Colosseum for them to fight in, but that's not many figures scale, and it would be better just to build your own mock instead. Second, the Roman chariot GWP that came with the Colosseum would go great with any of these Roman figures, but the figure that came with that GWP is nowhere as good as any of the figures I've talked about so far. Lastly, since the gladiator figures have come out, we've gotten an abundance of animals that you can get to have your figures fight, so that they don't always have to fight each other. Since then, we've gotten a lion, bear, and even a squirrel. I don't know, I was just trying to throw some more options out there. You know what? Maybe the squirrel has rabies. Now, throughout history, the Romans and Greeks have defended from many invaders, but they've also attacked many other civilizations. So you're gonna need some figures for your Romans to fight against. So I found a bunch of CMFs and made them into a group I call the Barbarians because that's what the Romans would have called them. The term Barbarian refers to a person who is perceived to be uncivilized. The Greeks and Romans used the term as they encountered many different foreign civilizations. The first is from series 12, the Hun warrior that represents the Huns, a nomadic people who lived in Central Asia. They were trouble for Rome and were known for attacking the Eastern Roman Empire. He wielded a sword and a circular printed shield. The Barbarian came in series 11. From what I can tell, he doesn't represent one group in particular. He is perfect to help build out any Barbarian army, or use as a gladiator in your arena. In series 25, we got another figure that is connected to the Barbarian. The Fierce Barbarian wields a recolored dream sword and has red hair. Her printing is amazing and her legs, arms, and torso could easily be reused for any Barbarian figure. But if you look at her belt, it has the same symbol as the Barbarian. Getting many of both these figures could help you build out a large horde. And, you know, adding in the two gladiators wouldn't hurt either. The Highland Battler came in Series 6. Now, the Highlander's bio does say, They may take our bricks, but they will never take our imagination! Which is a parody of William Wallace's famous line, They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! So I'd guess this figure is supposed to represent the Scots. Now, William Wallace was much later than the Roman Empire, but the Scots did fight the Romans, so you could use the figure for that or add it to your barbarian horde. He also wields a sword and a round printed shield. The warrior woman came in series 10. She doesn't seem to be from one group in particular, but can easily be added to your barbarian horde. She has a gold tip realistic spear and a circular shield with a gold eagle print. Before I talk about this last group of figs, if this video has been helpful, please hit that like button. And hey, let me know which one of these figs is your favorite in the comments down below. One civilization that goes perfect for both Greek and Roman is the Egyptians. Greeks were frequent visitors to Egypt and even fought alongside Egyptians. Whereas Egypt and Rome had many battles, with Rome eventually taking control of Egypt. To lead your Egyptian army, you got two choices. The first is the Pharaoh from Series 2. He has a Nemes headdress, similar to those seen in Pharaoh's Quest and a Cobra Scepter. The second is the Egyptian Queen from Series 5. In the Lego movie, she is actually referred to as Cleopatra, the famous Egyptian ruler who ruled from 51 BC to 30 BC. When one of your Egyptians dies, the Mummy Queen that came in Series 19 and the Mummy that came in Series 3 are perfect for that. Also, the Mummy Queen's headdress is perfect for another Egyptian figure. To build up your Egyptian army to fight the Romans, you'll need the Egyptian warrior from Series 13. This figure is great to army build and comes with a gold shield and a curve 
curved sword. He also comes with a headdress similar to the Mummy Queen. Another figure to add to the army is the Desert Warrior from Series 16. His bio actually mentions Pharaoh's quest. The Desert Warrior is always ready to plunge into unknown situations. This often sends him into the path of danger, but it can also lead to great reward as well. Like the time he discovered the cursed tomb of the ancient Amset Ra, and battled a great stone scarab to win the forgotten Pharaoh's treasure. This is a reference to Scorpion Pyramid, which is the tomb of Amset Ra, the main villain of Pharaoh's Quest, and to Scarab Attack. You know, speaking of Pharaoh's Quest, we still don't know how Egyptians built their pyramids. Definitely would be interesting to see how Lego figures built the pyramids, like did they use instructions or did they just wing it? We, we actually got images of how they did it. That's actually awesome. Can we like throw that up on the screen? Perfect. Let's take a look. Guys, uh, 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 take that down. Take, take, take that, take, take down right now. Take it down. Um, stop, stop, take it down. Uh, aliens are not real. Um, and, and, and they definitely did not help the Egyptians build the pyramids. The ADU says you should subscribe for more CMF content. Am I, am I good to go now?